Hi, I'm Russ with Delaney Drafting and Design, and in this video I want to show you how I like to switch out the Kapton tape on my 3D printer. So this is a FlashForge Guider 2 model, and when you get these new, the build platform has what they call a build tape, which is kind of this thick blue material. And um, this isn't the same one. This is for a different model, but this is this represents kind of like what they have here from factory. Now this is good material, I guess, for printing on PLA. And I kind of have challenges with it sometimes when I'm using ABS, and I use ABS a lot. I really like how an ABS part prints and comes off of the table when you're using Kapton tape. Um, this is an example of a part that I like to print here. And um, when this is done printing, I just literally just take it right off of the table when the, when the table is uh, cold. Because when the table is really hot, then it actually adheres really well to that. But you can see on the bottom side here, it's very flat, shiny, and smooth. And that's the surface that I like to get. And that's no raft support or anything. So uh, that's a nice, attractive part. And I don't get that when I'm using a blue build tape like this. So what I do with my FlashForge 3D printers is I simply take that build tape off. And when you do, it's kind of a shame to see that there, there's a nice piece of glass under here all along. And uh, again, you can just put your capped on tape right on that and just print right on that. So you see here, I had a crash where my nozzle actually hit. When it was printing the first layer, it was too close. It was up too high and it started cutting the capped on tape away. It cut right into that. So this is no good. I don't like that. Um, it's going to make for ugly parts in the future. It's not going to adhere well in the first layer. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this out. I'm just going to take this and peel this capped on tape up. You want to do this when it's cold. Make sure it's all removed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a little bit of cleaner and just um, clean it a little bit for any of my uh, greasy fingerprints and stuff like that. Okay, so now that it's clean, what I was going to mention is you can get capped on tape on rolls like this. And you can go ahead and put it on there. It might be pretty tedious to do so, especially since you're going to have to seam if it doesn't go with the whole length of your table. So what I like to do, actually, is I just get them in sheets. I get capped on tape in sheets like this. And the sheets that I get from 3M are like uh, 12 by 12 inches squared. And this table is like about 11 by 12. So all I got to do is just like trim an inch off of one edge and then it's good. But I do recommend that you do that trimming before you go to put it on and apply it to the table. You don't want to put it on there and then have to cut and trim after that stage. Make sure that it, it, it's all good and it fits where it's going before you do the next step here. So that's that. I'm going to take a little bit of the cleaner. And I'm just going to spray a little bit on there just to give me just a little bit to work with. I don't want to go, I don't want it going on there totally dry. So next I'm going to carefully take this and peel the film, the backing away. And you do have to be careful with this because this, it has a static cling to it, especially once you pull it away. So it wants to stick to itself. So you want to be really careful. I'm using a razor blade to see if I can just catch that edge right there and start peeling it back. Okay, so I'm getting it started here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and try to set it down on the table while I'm doing that to kind of hold it down so, again, it doesn't stick to itself. Now, I find that I get the best looking parts when I simply make sure that there's no bubbles or wrinkles on the capped on tape. So I'm going to peel it up a little bit and get it into position and lay it down nice and flat here. 
Okay, this is looking good. I'm going to take a squeegee here and I'm just going to squeeze. To flatten it out here, get, get whatever bubbles, wrinkles out right now, and this is this is also helpful to have a just a, a little bit of a spray to give you some workability here. Now I recommend when you do this, let it sit for a while. Don't print right after you do this. It might get bubbles in that. If you start printing right away, let the uh, let this dry out a little before you go and use it. But you can see that this is getting really nice and uh, really nice and flat and smooth. No seams, and I shouldn't have any bubbles. And then when this is nice and dry, then we should be able to go right back to printing again. Now, incidentally, when you if you do something like that where your table is too close to the nozzle and you cut into it, you might need to reprime your nozzle to make sure that the material is actually flowing out of there before you start printing again. But anyway, that's how I like to do my Kapton tape for a good 3D print. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to click the bell for notifications. And one more thing, happy 3D printing.